Hello, today I'm going to talk about media asset management and production asset management and how that works with Isilon storage. I'd like to acknowledge Simon Hayward for his help and interpretation in this glass ball presentation. So we should start here with our storage volume. There are two main types of media, live video or file-based video. So let's start off with live video. The live video can come into our system through either a satellite or it can come in through a camera. These video files will be either SDI or IPV. The video now coming in will pass through a third party appliance or application before being written to our storage volume. Depending on the size of the organization, we can have multiple appliances writing media to our storage volume. There are two formats of video that we are talking about. The second will be file-based. File-based video can be either FTP, USB, perhaps uh, cards from a camera, or other file types. These files will also pass through a third-party appliance or application before being written to our storage volume. So now we have our media on our central storage volume, either live video, from a camera or satellite, or file-based media, FTP, USB, passing through a third-party appliance. And again, the size of the organization, we can have multiple appliances here, writing to our central volume. Now over here on the other side, this is where we have our creatives. So this can be video editors, this can be animators, effects artists. And these guys over here are able to read the media from our central volume and write it back to the storage. And again, dependent on the size of the organization, we can have multiple seats of artists here and over here. So this is our creatives. This is our human beings working with the media that's stored here in our central volume that's been moved either as live video or arrived as files. Now down here, I'm going to draw a little factory. This is our automated services. These services here are to help and take some of the load from what our creatives are doing here. So this can be anything. This could be transcode. This could be encode. Or processing. This is doing those monotonous tasks, the heavy lifting. So the creatives over here can get on with being creative. So think of this as the humans on this side and machines here on this side. So now we have our video on our central storage, live video, file-based video, our creatives over here working with this video, and also some automated services helping our creatives, helping our lifting. All we have to do now is the other side is reverse with taking the video out of the system. So again, using a third party appliance or application, we can take live video out of our system. So we can come out as SDI or IPV. So we can feed something like a, a linear video stream or television transmission. File-based, 
third party appliance. Take files out of our system. And these come out as, again, FTP or other. These files can be passed over. And now we can talk in terms of video on demand, OTT services, or even to pass over to another system. By the size of the organization, we can have multiple channels taking files and video from our system. So we can have multiple channels in this application. So this is now what we would refer to as our production storage. Now, depending on the resolutions and the, the formats that we're working with, this storage volume here, uh, we can work with 4K uncompressed. So that would be a F800. Or if you're working with HD, this can be here a H500. When this storage volume here becomes full, we can migrate that storage down to another tier. Staying still within Isilon, maintaining the same file path, the same file names. We have another product here, A2000. And we would call this Active Archive. Running through it again. So on this side, we have our live video, whether it's from satellite or from a camera, SDI or IPV through our third party appliance or third party application, writing media to our storage. Here we have files being ingested, FTP or USB. These could be uh, files, USB cards from a camera. Again, through a third party appliance and dependent on the size of our organization, we can have multiple appliances writing that media to our central volume. Over here on the other side is where we have our creatives, where our humans are, our graphics effects artists, our editors, animators, color graders. We can have multiple seats of these creatives on this side, reading and writing and in real time if we need to, to our central storage volume. Down here, we have our automated services. This is to take care of some of the heavy lifting for the creatives, the transcoding, encode, processing power, brute grunt force to help our creatives over here. And then as we take our finished media, after we've completed all of that good stuff up here, our finished media comes off in a similar way. So we can come out as live video or streaming video, SDI or IPV, which can give us a linear video stream uh, for television or to feed another service. Or we can come out as file-based, FTP. Again, so we can support video on demand platforms, OTT, or to move on to another system. And as I said, we have our second tier of storage. When we're, our high performance storage here is full, we can migrate some of that media down that we're not using straight away, using Active Archive onto a, another tier of storage, keeping the same names, the file path, keeping everything in place and still residing within Isilon. So here is what we call our media asset management system.